What's up y'all, this is Hammer here again back with another video And today I'm going to be talking about the presidential election, specifically Kamala Harris um, I'm also going to be talking about Donald Trump too <laughs> But the reason I want to talk about it is because, you know, um, the last time I uploaded a video on this channel It was in regards to the assassination attempt of Donald Trump and a lot of things have happened since that <laughs> right we've um we've had the republican national convention we've had joe biden stepping down and and sort of you know selecting kamala endorsing kamala if to be more correct to be um the nominee instead of him we had a democratic convention where she became the official nominee and we just had the debate um, where, I, personally for me, I feel like, you know, Kamala whooped Trump's ass, in my opinion. Right? Kamala really defeated him in, in, in that debate. Whooped his ass really bad. <laughs> um, but what I want to talk about today is it, the presidential election, but specifically in regards to Kamala Harris and her chances in regards to the presidential election. Now, personally for me, right, what I have done is I have created checkpoints that I believe that if Kamala Harris is able to complete these checkpoints, then she will be in a strong position to win the election. Personally, I feel like she has already completed checkpoints, but I'm going to you know, go over them in the video. Um, but to be fair, for Donald Trump, I've also created checkpoints for him that I believe that if he completes... He could also win the White House, you know, win with the presidency. However, you know, personally, he has not even come close to completing those checkpoints. So, so I'm going to cook up both sides. And then after that, I'm going to go ahead and um, dive into, you know, other parts of the election, other stuff surrounding Trevor Kamala. So let's start with Kamala Harris, right? Number one, the first checkpoint that Kamala Harris needs to cover is the black identity. Kamala Harris needs to be able to address the fact that uh, there are a lot of people that are questioning her racial identity, specifically her black identity. Yes, we know she's part Indian, but it's really the fact that she's being pushed and marketed in the media as a black female candidate. And there's a lot of black people out here who are questioning her identity. So I feel like Kamala Harris... The first checkpoint she needs to, you know, complete in order to, uh, you know, have a good chance, good chance of winning the White House or winning the presidency is she needs to be able to solidify solidify that black identity. Now, I will say starting off, right, you know, like w when she first began her campaign, I think she was struggling. However, Donald Trump and the Republican Party has in many ways helped Kamala accomplish this, this checkpoint because... Because they have come out and thrown all kinds of racial epithets, racial attacks against her, you know, all kinds of racial tropes, all that has done is that has gone to solidify her racial identity, especially her black racial identity. Now, we know that she is part Indian, and, and you know that is a part of identity, but, you know, her presidential campaign right now is her being a black female. That's what she's running as. And I believe that Although she struggled at first, you know, completing this checkpoint, the racial attacks that Donald Trump and the Republican Party have thrown towards Kamala Harris have only gone to strengthen um, her, her racial identity. And I think um, she has now, in my opinion, completed that checkpoint. Um, so I, I would say that, you know, the first checkpoint she needs to win um, the presidency has been completed. Um ironically because of Trump, right? Trump essentially helped her complete that by throwing racial epithets, you know, Republicans Google going the racial routes, you know. It, it, it's, for example, Lara Loomer, you know, literally made a post, you know. I, of course, you know, it was more about her Asian, you know, side and, and how, you know, the White House will smell like curry if she gets him. Even Marjorie Taylor Greene had to come out and condemn her, right? Uh, but even though it, it it was focused more on her Asian side, the point is that that represents a lot of the racial attacks she has faced. 
And up until now, and probably even moving forward into the election, uh, because of all the racial attacks she has faced, specifically because of her black identity, yes, Lara Luma, the Lara Luma one was for many focused on her Asian identity, but specifically because of the racial attacks that Kamala Harris has received from Trump and and the GOP, uh, the Republican part of the, the right wing side, because of her black identity specifically, I think that has gone on to solidify her her quote unquote black identity. And I think that has allowed her to check off the um, racial checkpoint, the, the, the first checkpoint. The second checkpoint that Kamala Harris needs to um, complete is she needs to really get white women out there. Um, white women um, are a large voting base, in my opinion, and I feel like they really can be a win or, or break for the election. And we saw with Hillary Clinton that Hillary Clinton lost the election, particularly because she did not get enough white female support to get over the edge. I personally believe that if if Hillary Clinton would have gotten the right amount of white female support in 2016, she would have been president. And so in order for Kamala Harris to avoid that, she needs to really run on Roe versus Wade, Roe versus Wade, women's rights, um, um, you know, um, you know, freedom, women's rights, really, um, and really tap into that white feminism. Now, of course, we all don't know, right? And I've said before, um, race always comes before gender in real life. When po- when resources, look, let me just say this, okay? and, and this is going to be even. To my, you know, black women out there, because I'm, because I'm, I'm personally, I'm a black man. Look, in real life, it's always group first. It's always race first. And so, yes, folks may go out here and put a gender card, but we know when it comes, when power's on the table, when resources on the table, it's gonna be race first. So, even though, you know, uh, um, um. Kamala Harris can run the Royce Way card. There is always that risk that a lot of white females may feel a certain kind of way about, you know, a racially ambiguous woman becoming president before them, before a white female, and that alone may 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 make them essentially destroy, essentially block her from the White House. So there's always that possible. There's always that possibility. Um, because race is real, and, and despite and despite all the rhetoric of the sisterhood, and, and we're gonna come together at the end of the day when push comes to shove, it's race first. And by the way, the same thing applies on the male side too. Look, black men have been reminded, minded countless times, whether it's in the manosphere and on other areas, that they can try all they want to to unify with white men based on on gender. But at the end of the day, when push comes to shove, when power's on the table, when Muslim, when, when it's time for power and resources, it's always race first. And I think that's something black men have, have had to realize time and time again, even recently with the man of should be reminded time and time again. And I think for a lot of black women, um, they, and women of color also, they need to remind that that also exists when it comes to the gender thing. Yes, y'all can have your whole sisterhood thing, but when it comes to power and resources, it's always going to be race first. So I will say the second checkpoint that I think Kamala Harris needs to to, to really uh, um, um, push is the Roe versus Wade um, to get that white female, voting, white female vote out. Now, there's always that risk, always that risk that white women, you know, could in the end say, hey, you know, race first. But I, I, I feel like as of now, if she's able to put push the Roe versus Wade, women's rights stuff, I think if she does that, then that will give her the second checkpoint that she needs to be able to uh um quote unquote win the election which is getting a strong enough or enough of a white female support. The third checkpoint that she needs is going to be the blue collar voters, the, the white blue collar voters. And I'm specifically referring to, you know, the upper Midwest, right? Whether it's Wisconsin, Michigan, Minnesota, and even Pennsylvania, right? Um, the, the, the as people refer to it as the traditional blue wall states. Now, when it comes to Kamala Harris, Kamala Harris, in my opinion, was able to c- complete this third checkpoint by picking Tim Waltz. Um, based on my understanding, Tim Waltz, I think I, he's either the former governor 
or is the current governor, but nevertheless, um, Tim Walz is a guy who essentially, uh, I believe, is either the former governor or the current governor. But nevertheless, he was a governor of Minnesota. Um, and I feel like picking a guy like him perfectly appeals to the um, 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 white blue collar of uh, voice. Whether or not he was a former governor or the current governor, y'all can tell me the chat. At the end of the day, he was a governor. And picking Tim Waltz as your quote unquote um as your quote unquote vice presidential uh, 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 nominee was perfect because he would do a great job appealing uh, um to those white blue collar voters. And whether or not he was a former governor or the current governor, once again, y'all can tell me the chat. At the end of the day, the fact that he was able to rise. To, to that to that level in that state, and the fact that he does come from a white blue collar background gives him a you know gives him does the appeal that you need to tap into the white blue collar vote. So I think that Tim Walz I think you know gives her the the third checkpoint which is the white blue collar vote. And the best part is that by being able to secure the white blue collar vote or I guess the white blue collar union vote in, in the upper Midwest, this also gives her the opportunity to spend more resources in the south and attack the south like Georgia, Arizona. Remember, uh, Biden flipped Georgia and Arizona in 2020. So by her as in she's securing the white blue collar vote in the upper Midwest, she can then much more easily attack the southern states. So I so I will say so far because of Tim Waltz, she has secured the third checkpoint. Now for the fourth checkpoint, the last checkpoint is being able to get the anti-Trumpers and traditional Republicans to come out for you. The fourth checkpoint that I believe Kamala Harris will need to do in order to win the election is that if she can get a lot of the anti-Trumpers and the traditional Republicans who you know, feel disgruntled or feel like they want to get the party back from Trumpism, if you can get them to vote for you, then you will have the election. And and I believe that I, I, I believe that she has already completed the, the fourth checkpoint because first, you know, when you look for example at the Lincoln project, right? Um and you look for example at um the fact that former staffers, Republican staffers, have come out and endorsed her. When you look, for example, at the fact that Liz and, and, and Dick Cheney have come out and endorsed her. What you are seeing is that the anti-Trumpers and many traditional Republicans have now come out. And not just that, even a Republican mayor in Arizona has come out and endorsed Kamala Harris. So what you are seeing is that the anti-Trumpers and the traditional Republicans have essentially come out in full force to essentially um, endorse Kamala Harris. Uh, of course, the anti-Trumpers because they hate Trump, but the traditional Republicans because a lot of traditional Republicans, you know, I think swallowed Donald Trump in 2016 and, and tolerated him, but I feel like after January 6th, after his, after his presidency, they were appalled. And... I feel like many of them, they want the party back. So you have the anti-Trumpers who hate Donald Trump, and you have the traditional Republicans who want the party back, you know, away from Trump. They want to free the Republican Party from Trump. They, they want to have the party back. Those two groups have united, and I, I believe that she has been able to get those people to to support her, uh, in my opinion. And, 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 and if those folks come out, in um this election, then yeah, she election. So so I will say that um you know all of the endorsements she has gotten from Liz Cheney, Dick Cheney, uh Republican staffers, um, Lincoln Project, all that stuff. I think that gives her the fourth checkpoint, which is getting the anti-Trump slash traditional GOP vote. So I think, like I said before, um the four checkpoints that Kamala Harris will need to win, um. I believe that she has essentially um, completed them, right? Solidifying the, the, the solidifying her, 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 solidifying her black identity, uh, running on the Roe versus way to get the the white female. Okay, I'll say it again. The four checkpoints that I believe Kamala, the four checkpoints that I believe Kamala Harris has successfully been able to complete in order to give her a strong chance 
to win the presidency is one being able to solidify her black identity in, in order to you know uh, in order to sort of get the black vote or have a strong support with the black vote number two being able to run the reverse's way in order to get the white female vote or enough to get her o over the top number three being able to get the the quote unquote uh, um, blue collar vote white blue collar vote to secure the up upper midwest so she can attack down south and number four being able to get many anti trumpers and, and, and traditional Republicans to vote for you uh, um, to sort of give you that, that extra bump that you may need against Donald Trump. I believe she has accomplished all those four uh, um, checkpoints and she is now in a strong position to win the White House. Now to cover Donald Trump, when it comes to Donald Trump, Donald Trump, um, when it comes to the checkpoints, I believe he has not completed any of them. Here are the checkpoints Donald Trump will need in order to win the White House. Number one, Trump will need to run on the migration issue. Um, run on it, run on it, run on it, right? The issue um, that Donald Trump is primarily facing is that, number one, Donald Trump, during his first presidency, did not build a wall. Number two, Donald Trump had multiple caravans. I, I believe they've even two m migrant caravans during his first presidency, right? Number three, Donald Trump has literally come out and said that, um, you know, he essentially supports a policy in which if you are a foreign student who graduates from a U.S. university, you will get an automatic green card. So what am I saying here? Oh, and also, number four, uh, um, Donald Trump has been caught, you know, with illegal immigrants in his, you know, within his companies. What I'm saying here is that it's going to be very, very hard for Donald Trump to run the migration thing, or I guess, quote unquote, get the, the migration checkpoint, when we are now seeing time and time again that the rhetoric doesn't match the action. For example, in addition to all the things that I listed, Trump also, he literally sunk a border deal in Congress and told Republicans not to back it simply because he wanted to be able to use migration during the election. So all those things, you know, Essentially, con all those things, you know, lead me to conclude that Donald Trump um, has not is, is not even close to completing the first checkpoint, which is being able to run the migration issue. And the reason is because there are too many examples, too many, too many just reasons, too many ways in which he has contradicted the rhetoric. Right, the disconnect between the migrant rhetoric. And his actions make it very hard for him to be able to complete the first checkpoint of being able to sort of run on the migrant issue. Number two, the white blue collar workers, right? Donald Trump is going to need to get back the, 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 the blue wall. He's going to need to break that because that's what gave him 2016. And he lost that in 2020, ironically. So Trump needs to get back those white blue collar workers to get, you know, in 2024 in order to win. The issue... And I believe that this also, I think, what cost him in 2020 is that Donald Trump's policies and the Republican policies are antithetical to the traditional white blue collar voter, right? Remember, Republicans are against unions, right? I don't even think Donald Trump supports unions. So you have a dynamic where the majority of, of the white blue collar workers who exist in um, these upper Midwest states are unionized workers. They're the unionized workers. So, 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 so you going out there and trying to run to get the vote when it's obvious that your party does not support unions and you yourself very much are not really pro-union is going to be a very hard thing for you to do. And I believe that he was really only able to get around that in 2016 because he was such a new candidate from, from the right that I think, you know, a lot of folks were able to kind of give him a chance. But I think once he got into office... And a lot of them, upper, you know, white blue collar workers saw that, yeah, you know, he may have been a new guy on the scene, but the Republican Party is still an anti right? You know, um, the, them jobs are not coming back, you know, things, you know, the, 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 the quote unquote good old days ain't coming back. They realized, oh, okay, you know, okay, well, that's it. And they went back to the Democrats in 2020. So I feel like. You know, he would need to get the the white blue collar voter to come out for him, but the issue is that because his party is anti union, because he himself is fundamentally anti union, 
that I think, in my opinion, is going to prevent him from being able to win the um, the white blue collar vote that he will need in order to win the election um, this fall. So that's that's the reason why I believe that this, that's the reason why I believe why Trump is not going to be able to complete the second checkpoint. Now the third checkpoint that Trump um, would need, and I believe the final and the most important, Trump is gonna need to get the anti-Trumpers and traditional voters back on his side. One of the reasons Trump was able to win in 2016 is because even though a lot of Republicans, um, traditional GOP people, were very much against Trump, because Donald Trump selected Mike Pence, that was him giving an olive branch to the traditional GOP, and it worked. Because he said the Set the pens. He gave an olive branch to Susan GOP, and a lot of Republicans were able to coalesce around him. I think giving him what he needed to win the 20th election. This time around, he has essentially spit in the face of the traditional Republicans and the anti-Trumpers. Right? By him going, first of all, the entire Republican convention was just—it was literally a MAGA fest. A MAGA fest, right? Mike Pence was not there. Bush was not there. Rob, like the traditional GOP was not there, and it was obvious that he had essentially completely spit those people out. Um, and so, by him selecting Vance instead of him selecting a traditional, you know, GOP Republican, that was him essentially putting the middle finger to the traditional GOP. And so, all that does is that now all of those anti-Trumpers. All of those traditional GOPers who, who who you may have been able to win back or coalesce on now they have a reason to either stay home or vote against through this election cycle. And so because of this, Donald Trump is not gonna be able to complete the, the third checkpoint, which is being able to get back some of those anti Trumpers, get back some of those traditional Republicans to come out for you in the election. So in the end, yeah, all of the three checkpoints, which is one running on the mi migration issue, two, um, getting the white blue collar um, worker, and three, getting back the anti-Trump Republican, um, you know, um, voters side. All of those three things, in the end, he has not completed or even close to completing. And that's why I will say, you know, because Kamala Harris has completed all of her checkpoints, and because Donald Trump has not completed any of his checkpoints, which is, of course, once again, one, being able to run on the migration issue, two, being able to get back the white blue collar voter, and three, being able to get back the anti Trump and, and the traditional Republican voter, because he has not been able to complete any of his checkpoints, in the end, I will say that Kamala Harris has a stronger chance of winning the election. And this is. This is before I even factor in the recent debate. So Kamala Harris right now has has all of her checkpoints completed. Donald Trump has none of his checkpoints completed. And so Kamala Harris, as of right now, is in a stronger position to win the election. Now, moving forward, right? We already know that a lot of things have happened since the assassination attempt, right? Uh, because that was the last vivid video I made, which was on the assassination attempt on, on Trump. Since the assassination attempt, we had the MAGA, um, quote-unquote, Republican National Convention. And a lot of Republicans will say, oh, this is, is going to be it. And Joe Biden, and, and, and um, yeah, it's going to be it. And then, of course, Joe Biden stepped down and endorsed Kamala. And Kamala went on to become a nominee, right? And it just changed everything. Now, I remember, there were so many people out here who were saying, oh, my God, Kamala isn't going to do nothing. Like, people were underestimating. And I said, look, don't underestimate her, okay? If she does things right, she can win. And since her being, you know, uh, since Joe Biden stepped down and endorsed her as, as, as president till now, not only has she completed all of my checkpoints, she is now in a strong position to win. And this now brings me to the debate we had last night. Because even before, sorry, not last night, the debate we recently had, even before the recent debate between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump, 
Kamala Harris had, had already completed the checkpoint. She was already, uh, uh, just based on my own checkpoints, in a strong position to win the election. All that debate did was just solidify that, right? The, during the debate, we literally saw Kamala Harris was baiting Donald Trump the entire time. She was baiting him left and right. You know, for, for example, she brought up the fact that, you know, when it came to his um, um, rallies, people will leave early, right? And Trump essentially, you know, caught the bait and, and, and derailed himself. Throughout the entire debate, it was literally just her answering the question, put in baits for Trump, and Trump bid the bait and essentially derailed himself. And it got to a point where he would literally speak even when, when his mic was off. So now, do I think that, you know, uh, um, uh, personally, I will say that this was probably as bad as the Biden versus Trump debate. That's how bad it was. The only difference is that I don't think Trump, Trump is, gonna, is going to step down. Instead, what Donald Trump has done is that after the horrendous debate, right, because, of course, you know, nobody wants to tell him the truth that you lost the debate and, and, and it's, it's as bad as, 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 when, as when Biden lost the debate against you. Instead, what they have done is Trump essentially has now been pushing this narrative about Haitians in, 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 in uh, Ohio eating cats and dogs. Now, when, when he was having a meltdown during the debate, when he was being destroyed during the debate, he brought up all of these conspiracy theories because, you know, you, you, can, tell he, you can tell that he knew he, he was losing. And so in desperation, he brought that up. And after the, the debate, when, when everyone was telling him, yeah, man, you didn't do good, he, he, he went out there and kind of just doubled down on that. And look, all of the Trump voters, Trump supporters, this is not going to help Trump. Okay, this is not going to help him because first you guys said, oh, well, you know, it's not that Trump had a bad debate. It's that, you know, it was three against one. It, it, it was the two anchors and, and, and her against Trump. But wait a minute. Throughout the entire debate, Trump was literally speaking with Michael's off. He was interrupting people. The man, <laughs> he was he was literally fighting with the host. So you saying that it was three against one is just retarded, especially considering the fact that the, the, the last debate he had uh, against Biden, he had it with, you know, with, 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 he had it on CNN with, J I believe it was Jake Tapper and Dana Bash, right? Quote, unquote, mainstream leftist, you know, uh, um, channel, mainstream leftist uh, um, uh, um, moderators, and he was still able to win. So this is just cope. The reality of the conversation, he did bad. So, first, y'all came out and said, oh, it's because of the moderators of three against one, right? And so, when that failed, y'all went ahead and said, well, actually, it's because Kamala Harris had an earpiece, right? So, all these conspiracy theories of, oh, Kamala Harris somehow wearing this earpiece where apparently people are feeding her the information. Now, once again, in case y'all don't understand how earpiece were, let's say she, she wore an earpiece. You do realize she would have to wait for them to tell her what to say, what to say, right? You would see delays. So that got debunked, right? And so when so so, so first, y'all were complaining saying that it, it, it was a three against one, and of course that that, that whole argument fell apart because once again, if that's if because once again, his behavior throughout the debate, in, you know, interrupting people, speaking what his mic was off, and the fact that he was also able, able to do good in the, the first debate against against Biden even under a quote unquote left wing channel, left wing moderators, you know, you claim that it was a three against one when it came to this debate, it's not gonna work. So 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 that failed. Then y'all went with the whole earpiece thing. And of course, you know, that failed because if she was wearing earpiece, we'll see you know obvious delays in her speech. Right, and plus it's obvious it was an earring, right? Because we see her wearing multiple times that we even we even have pictures. So when that feel when 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 the when, when the three against when the three against one argument failed, then y'all went to the earpiece argument. When the earpiece argument failed, now y'all are out here pushing all this Haitian stuff. And let me tell you something right now: this will backfire. You guys are literally giving Democrats the biggest, the biggest the biggest gift they could have asked for. Because the issue they've been having is that because of all the migration coming through, there has been a rift when it came to black voters. But a lot of them, you know, in Chicago and stuff. So 
they've been trying to find a way how can we appeal to migrants, appeal to the immigrant vote, while also getting the black vote on, black vote on top. You guys, by having all this stuff about the Haitian migrants and, and eating cats and dogs, which is going to get Haitians have been here for a very long time. There's never been any uh, um, um, any of those rumors going on. And even now, right, this story is a rumor. It's been it's been disproven. It's literally it's literally it's literally just a rumor that was spread. And that's it. There's no facts and evidence, right? And you guys are helping Democrats because now Democrats who have been trying to find a way to deal with the fact that the the massive influx of migrants has you know made black voters mad. They are now thanks to you and your quote unquote my uh, Haitian conspiracy theories. They are now able to appeal to the my immigrant vote and the black vote at the same time. Because think about what they're doing. They are now essentially running the whole, hey, here you have these quote-unquote immigrants who are being attacked by Donald Trump, right? Which applies to the whole, you know, the immigrant stuff, whether they're black or not. And then they're able to say, oh, and also these immigrants are also black, so it's also anti-black racism. They're literally able to appeal to both sides at the same time with this. This will backfire. I'm like, look. Even a lot of quote unquote black Trump voters, many of folks who are Trump voters, right? When they see stuff like this, it turns them up because it's too black. What do you think black Americans or black people are thinking when they go on Twitter and they see videos or images being posted or all these AI generated images of black folks with cats and dogs? You think they don't feel you think they don't feel some you think they don't feel some kind of way about that? You think that black folks can't see what's going on about with the Haitians? They can't see the, the, the racial undertones there? All you're simply doing is helping the Democrats. And you're hurting Trump. And by the way, one of the main arguments, right, that people have had against Donald Trump and the GOP is that the Republican Party is a white nationalist party. Yes, Democrats, you know, also, you know, believe in, in supporting, they, they also believe in maintaining white power, we get that. But at least they're more co 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 covert about it. You guys are overt, literally overt about, you know, white supremacy. And a lot of people have been trying to convince minority voters, blah, 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 oh, you know, that's not true, they're not racist, right? Try to do that. And, and, and they were able to make some inroads, you know, this year because of the whole migrant thing. All of the advocacy, all of that stuff to minority voters, that magically goes away because of it. Because now it's so blatant. When you got J.D. Vance, when you got Trump putting all of this, even though it's been shown, it's been proven, that's not what's happening. They're still pushing it. Once again, Haitians have been here for a very long time. There's never been any of that going on. This is purely, and personally, if you were to ask me, I personally believe that the reason why Donald Trump is pushing is because he is running against a woman who is being branded as, as a black female candidate. And I believe, because once again, there are a bunch of conspiracy theories online, right? But they don't all get promoted. So promoting this one was a choice, even though it's been unproven. I believe that when it came to Trump, the reason why this appealed to him is because he was running against a black female candidate, right? A woman who's branded as a black female candidate. And he felt like by pushing a narrative or a conspiracy theory of black immigrants, quote unquote, eating cats and dog, right? He felt that would be the best thing to do when running against a black female candidate. So in other words, he was appealing to race, to anti-black racism, right? Now, of course... Democrats can, can also say, oh, this also an attack on, on immigrants, which is, which is true. But that's what it was about. And you think black folks can see that Haitians being black probably played a huge role in why Trump and them are, are quote-unquote, uh, pushing these narratives? The fact that Kamala Harris is, 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 is a the black female candidate against Trump probably plays a role as to why they're pushing these narratives. You think folks can see that? So the reality is that all of this is back is, is going back far on him because look I am I am already seeing a lot of black men black folks who were saying they were going to vote Trump and this situation has turned them on. Let's say you know I, I, I'm 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 gonna go vote because it's too blatant it's too blatant and so 
my whole thing is this, all right, is that Republicans need need to understand that one, Kamala Harris, based on my checkpoints, is already ahead to win. Number two, Trump got his ass kicked during the debate. Number three, all of these excuses from, oh, it was three against one to, quote-unquote, there was an earpiece to, quote-unquote, now with Haitians uh, eating cattle, that's not going to work. In fact, the Haitians ones probably going to back on you the most. Let it go. Personally, for me, I feel like there is a lot of stake here because the symbolism is, 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 is too blatant. You have on one, think about this for example, right? You have on one side Donald Trump, who represents, right? He has become this character, even though in real his policies online with his way, but he has become this caricature in many ways of the good old days of white folks, the good old days of the old white guy. We know what it is, right? That's his image. And on the other hand, you essentially have, um, you know, Kamala Harris, the, the black female, black, the mixed woman candidate. And I personally believe that for a lot of white folks, when they look at the declining birth rates, when they look at the economic opportunities that are leaving the United States and going to the once again, the center of capital and the center of power is moving from the West towards the rest of the globe. When they see all these things, right? When they see the clown of the West, the rise of the rest, the rise of the global South, when they see um, quote unquote non, you know, um, 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 whites doing good, rising the rank, when they see folks, you know, non whites coming to their communities, quote unquote, replacing them. Which is what I think is happening. But really, you know, it's just that they're not having they're not having kids, right? When they see all these things, it makes them yearn for what they view as those good, good old days. When, 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 quote unquote, those niggers knew, knew their place. And I believe that this dynamic with Kamala Harris is 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 just is is too blatant. You got the old white dude who's I mean, it's, it's, right? Who who's trying to sell this image of the past, this good old white past, the good old days white past. Even though, once again, his policy will reflect this, but the good old days white past. And you got on the other side a, a, a biracial black female um, who in many ways represents, I guess you could say, she she literally is a representation of the how the era of, of whiteness is coming to an end in many ways. And what I fear is that because of just the symbolism, because of how blatant this image is, you know, I think a lot of them wife will lose their mind. Now, I, do I think it's going to be a civil war? No, but I think that it's going to be worse than January 6th. You know, if come out, which I, first of all, I believe she has a strong chance to win, but... But if my predictions come true, if, if, if all of my um, checkpoints predictions come through and she wins the election, I think I'm going to lose a mind. Now, I think the country will survive. It'll be, I don't think it'll be a civil war, but I think they'll lose a mind. I think that it, for, for them, they're going to view it as they've lost the country. Right? And what this will also do is that this will put immense amount of pressure on the GOP. Because you know, if you have a guy like Donald Trump who loses against Joe Biden, and then, who, who, you know, who, who, Joe Biden, who was the vice president, the first black president, and then goes on to Trump lose against Trump lose against Joe Biden, who was the first who Trump loses lose against Joe Biden, who was the vice president of the first black president, and then Trump goes on to lose against Kamala Harris, who becomes the first black female president. Like, that will be too. That that would be such a blow to the GOP that I believe that this may actually force the GOP to, you know, essentially let go of whiteness. That look, if if Trump, who is the image of quote unquote, you know, the good old white days, gets defeated by this biracial woman, then you then I think that would be a wake up for the GOP. I think that the GOP would have to really think about. How to move forward? How how to let the past go? Okay, okay, we, we gotta move. We, we gotta we gotta move forward. This, this double down whiteness that's not gonna work. Yes, Democrats also believe in maintaining 
um, white liberal also believe main, maintaining, uh, um, you know, white people and, and, and white people, power, white power in some extent, but they're more covert about it, right? Um, they, they at least are, are more willing to allow minorities to rise to rank, even though they still believe in maintaining you know, white dominance. But Republicans have been covert. Sorry, Republicans have, have been overt. Or they're gonna say, okay, you know, we we gonna have to adjust, right? I, I I personally believe that if Kamala Harris wins, I think that you know there's a pretty good chance that you may see the GOP really try to actually uh, diversify the power, really try to move away, really try to diversify. Now, of course, you know they could just double down on whiteness. Who knows? But that's you know I think that's a possibility. So, this election is so pivotal because it, it really shows two images of America. And, you know, it's obvious. Either is the the good, good old days, Donald Trump, or the future Kamala Harris is what it is. Um, but one thing I also want to say before I let you go is that, you know, if you guys look at the whole, you know, um, the, the, the Ohio thing, right? If you go to the town where, quote unquote, these migrants are being sent to, that white town was dying. Because people keep forgetting how white people are not having kids. Like, they're literally dying in America. Like, they're, they're, there's more deaths than births. So it was a dying town. And, you know, it, it was a dying town. It was a place where the quote-unquote manufacturing left. And, and when the jobs and manufacturing left, a lot of people left. So when you look at that town, it's mostly poor white trash. Let's be honest, it's poor white people. And for a lot of these people, it's like, okay... You have poor white trash, poor poor white folks, um, who you know, who who are living in a situation in which, um, the manufacturing jobs left a long time ago. The the the, the place was dying, the city was dying, and essentially now you have all these migrants who are coming, these, these Haitian migrants being brought in, right? Because here's the issue, look. What I hate about Republicans that Republicans, well, I, I will say both sides don't want to tell the truth. OK. The reason why we are seeing what we are seeing in regards to migrants and immigration is two things. Number one, the United States de destabilizing the world and engaging in imperialism is what has caused people in the global south, specifically South America, to, to come to that. So, so once again, because you go out of destabilizing the homelands, it's from the homelands, it causes them to come to where you are, right? Invade the world, invite the world. So that's, so that's what's driving the migration issue. You know, you, you, you can send them all you want to on, on, until you stop, you know, interfering with the country, the still other countries, um, you are going to keep getting those migrations, right? But two, the reason why when these migrants get here, they are not sent back, and the reason why the U.S. is also importing so many folks legally in America has to do with the fact that the United States, due to capitalism, is essentially having low fertility. Because when society, when society industrializes, right, once a society reaches the end of the industrial cycle, what you see is that you have a, a major drop in birth rates, right? You know, because you know, going from the agrarian economy to an industrial economy. Uh, in which the cost of living is higher, it's harder to raise the kids. You know, children go from being a benefit in a great economic model to now a cost. Um, all of those things essentially uh, um, create a situation in which, when society industrializes and, and, and sort of reaches in that cycle, you will see a drop in your birth rates. And so, because when this drop in birth rates in America goes so long, um, America has had to import people. Right, migrants, right, immigrants, legal immigrants, right, in order to sustain the labor force, in order to have enough people to pay into the systems, pay into, you know, Medicare and Social Security, all that stuff, right? And it's also the reason why when these migrants get here, they're not sent back. Because once again, even though the United States, the GOP, many folks in the, in the government, people have, have issues with how the folks are getting here because it's uncontrolled, it's chaotic. At the end of the day, because they have a low fertility rate and any, any labor, when these folks get here, they have no problem using them for labor. And they will also import people overseas to supplement as well too. So that's what's happening. Until you stop interfering into other people's country and destabilizing their countries, you will always have the migration will keep happening. 
And until you are able to reverse the, 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 the declining birth rates, then what's going to happen is that until you're able to reverse the declining birth rates, then what's going to happen is that when these migrants get here, they'll be used for labor. Even 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 the state and and the GOP and how how they got here. When they get here, though, they'll be used for labor, and the U.S. government will also import their people to also be for labor and to also sustain the population. So that's what's causing this. And because both sides don't want to be honest about why why we all we are and, and what's going on, that's why we got all, all of this politicking going on, right? Let's say, oh, it's about compassion. And the right say, oh, it's about, you know, building the wall. But both sides understand that what's happened, that they, that, you know, irregardless of how one may feel about the migrants getting here, at the end of the day, one, if you if if you keep interfering in, in the countries, if you keep destabilizing the countries, those migrants will come, are going to keep coming. And two, unless you are able to reverse the declining birth rates, then what that means is that when these migrants get here, because of you destabilizing the countries, you're going to have to use them for, for labor, irregardless of how you you feel about how they got here. You're going to have to use, use them for labor. And number two, you're also going to have to import the people as well to legally um, for labor, for population, you know, stabilization as well too. So all of those things are why we are where we are. Okay? So imperialism, American imperialism overseas is what drives migration. And capitalism, which suppresses the birth rates here, here in America, is what creates the need to keep the, the, the migrants in America and use them for labor and to also import legal immigrants to also use them for labor in order to stabilize the population and not people who, people who can pay to the system, pay into taxes, tax revenues, pay into social security, welfare, all that stuff, and pay into medical, that stuff, right? And that's what we are. And both sides have chosen to politic and, and you know, pander and, and sell a slogan instead of telling you the truth as to why we are, we are. Which is the reason why, despite all the promises, Donald Trump, when he got into office, the wall didn't get built, right? Um, you still had migrant caravans, you still had that stuff. Once again, until you deal with the fundamentals, you know, um, things will keep happening. Until you deal with the fundamentals out driving the situation around immigration in this country, things are going to keep going the way they're going. With that being said, I, I'm going to go ahead and um, leave it there. Is there anything else that I want to say? Um, I think that the, I think I think there's one I want to say. One thing I will say before I let y'all go um, is, look, to all of the black men, because um, look, there has been a lot of talk about black men and how many black men may um, feel a certain kind of way about Kamala Harris and and her presidency. Look. Let me just say it's a black man right now, okay? Irregardless of how you may feel about Kamala Harris, irregardless of how you may feel about, you know, whether you feel like the Democratic Party is emasculating you, which I get, right? Whether you feel the Democratic Party is not focused enough on black men, which I get. Understand that the other side is literally... Not even talking to you. I have gone into back and forth conversations with BGS, with all kinds of folks who they will always start up the conversation talking about, you know, what are the tangibles? What are the quote unquote tangibles that quote unquote um, 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 Democrats are offering to us? And I always say, look, yes, we understand that, you know, when it comes to the left and the Democratic Party, right? White liberals still, deep down, believe in maintaining you know white privilege and white power, but at least they're willing to talk to you. At least they want to give you something. At least they still need your vote because the majority of white people white people vote GOP. The other side is not even talk. I'll give you an example. For how are not, are not are not speaking of operations. Yes, of course, you know we saw what happened with Gavin Newsom in California, in which you know. Gavin Newsom essentially sunk the, the, the operation. We get that. But the Democratic Party is the only party that's even speaking about, even talking about it. 
And I personally believe the only reason why they're not pushing it forward is because they fear backlash from the non-white voters, from, from, the, from the non-black voters. So, please, don't talk to me about the quote-unquote lack of tangibles in the Democratic Party or, you know, what are they bringing to the table when you and I both know that the other side, the GOP, wants you dead. The other side is not even talking to you. The only thing the Republican Party and Donald Trump support is they support your ability to vote for them. That's it. So when you got two sides, right, we begin to talk about, you know, uh, um, third party. Look, America is, is a two-party state. If you want to play politics, you got to pick a side. You have one side which they rely on, on, on white voters. They get a majority white vote. And they don't want, and and for them, they don't want to have to rely, rely on minority voters. And they do end up having to do that. They will try to do everyone else to black folks. So, Republican Party literally hates your guts, and they want they are offering you nothing but supporting your ability for them. The other side, yes, we know deep down, covertly, they believe in, in maintaining white privilege and white, and white power. We get that, but at least. Because they need your vote, they're willing to give you something. They're willing to talk to you. Hell, the first black president came from that party. Do you think you could have ever had a black president from the from, from the right? I'm like, you saw what happened with Ann Coulter. And everyone saw Ann Coulter told the Zek, an Indian, that, yo, I'm sorry, I can out because you're Indian. Now, if she can say to the Zek, a guy who's been paying, he has literally pander to white conservatives by throwing black people on the bus for so, for months now. And yet God told, nope, not white enough. But you think somehow a black man could, could have become a president from, from, from the Republican Party. Stop. So, before I close off, hopefully this time, right, to all the black men who are saying, no, come out, look, evil goes on how you feel about Kamala. Policy-wise, you are going to get way more from Kamala being president than Donald Trump. At least you're able to get some, at least you're able to advocate for some. If Trump gets in office, they will give you nothing. Look, Republicans already took back affirmative action. Yes, we know that white females are the biggest beneficiary, but still, that's opportunities black folks have lost. And now they're, they're, they're going after, uh, um, quote unquote, DI. Just going after, you know, any sort of program that empowers black folks, particularly black men too. So we gotta be honest here. Right? Black you know, programs that benefit black people in general. So we're gonna be honest here. The choice is very clear. You have you have Kamala Harris, the Democratic kind of Party, who, even though deep down covertly, you know, the white liberals still believe in, in white power and, and, and maintain the white power structure, right? Because they need your vote, they still want to give you something. You're at least able to you're at least able to guess them. You're at least able to advocate. They're at least able to talk to you. They will listen to you at least. And at least give you something. That's what you get with Kamala Harris. The other side, you get called a nigger. And the other side is, nigger, nigger, the only thing we're giving you is the right to a fuss. Please, do not go out here and vote based on, but based on emotions. Be an educated voter black man and vote based on policy. Which is obviously come out here because that's better for you in the long term. You will go how you feel. It's not perfect, right? It's not a preferable candidate, but compared to Trump and the, and the GOP, it is better for you. But with that being said, I will leave it there. And um, yeah, y'all tell me what you guys think in the chat. Like, share, subscribe, hammer out.